Well, it is a startling statistic. 93% of cancer centers across the U.S. say they are running short on a vital drug called carboplatin used in many cancer treatments. According to the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, some facilities are being forced to ration the drug. Carboplatin is not the only cancer drug in short supply. 14 others are now becoming hard to find. And drug shortages are becoming an industry-wide problem. The Senate Homeland Security Committee said in March that 295 drugs were in short supply. For more on this, let's welcome Dr. Archina Sadhu. She is the director of the System Diabetes Program at Houston Methodist and a board-certified endocrinologist specializing in diabetes. Uh, doctor, great to have you. Why do you believe we're seeing these shortages? Well, there's many uh, reasons for the shortages and, and several layers, in fact. But ultimately, it comes down to manufacturing of these drugs in high quality, high quality enough that it passes all the tests that the FDA requires. And if you have a limited number of manufacturers of these drugs and something goes wrong, in their process that affects quality, uh, then we don't have other options for, for the same drug. The other part is these drugs can and often are uh, manufactured overseas, outsourced um, because of their generic status, and so there's a very small profit margin as well. But speaking from a medical perspective, this can cause chaos in terms of uh, treatment plans for patients and their ultimate outcomes. Absolutely. And I would imagine it'd be a scary situation, not only for the patients, but their families. How do doctors deal with it when patients are in need? Well, we quickly um, have to come up with an alternative treatment plan that is um, the next best thing. Um, and as being part of a, a pharmacy and therapeutics committee at a large hospital system, we have um, processes in place that continue to monitor closely when drugs are becoming in short supply and when they're in critical shortage so that we can prepare ahead of time uh, by educating all the physicians that use these drugs and offering alternative treatment plans. So this is the best we can do at this time. And this is not new to the healthcare community. We've had shortages and uh, several different um, types of drugs and even uh, other supplies such as dextrose fluids. So we're able to swing and uh, change route and, and offer uh, some type of treatment plan. But of course, these will not be the highest quality and best outcome treatment plans we'd like to offer the patients. So we've also seen the popularity of drugs like Ozempic, for example, for what's called off-label use. Who's responsible for making sure the patients who need the drug get it? Well, all prescription drugs should, um, in fact, be prescribed by the FDA label indications. And this is especially true for drugs in, in short supply. Uh, the Ozempic story is uh, one that's never happened before where um, a drug that is exactly the same as Ozempic but approved for weight loss alone called Wagovi uh, came onto the market and had extremely high demand. So the manufacturing for Wagovi actually had issues and so they weren't able to meet that high demand for the weight loss indication. But because Ozempic is the same drug but approved for diabetes, its demand also rose in that short supply. So you can see how there was a domino effect from one drug to another. Um, and it really does cause havoc in patients' health when a effective drug is suddenly withdrawn from their treatment plan and then we have to scramble for um, other alternatives. And as I know you're aware, there's an element here of income inequality as well. Many of these shortages disproportionately affect the poor. Is there a way to remedy that problem in your view? Uh, there are many ways, and of course, outside of my medical expertise, because these require um, health care policy changes, um, as well as other financial strategies to have equal access. But I think what's really uh, concerning to us now is these are not the most expensive drugs that are only in shortage. It's these generic drugs, which do not cost a lot um, uh, for the patient. Um, and 
However, because their profit margins are very limited, they're, they're, they're created and are manufactured in very limited supply. So it really does seem like when a drug is not, uh, not expensive, in generic status, we should be able to supply it for everyone that needs it equally. So this is going to go beyond just the prescription from a physician. Uh, this is going to require a much bigger uh, tactic to solve. All right, we have about 20 seconds left. Is there anything patients can do to protect themselves? Well, I guess it, it depends on what you mean by protect yourself. You cannot predict a, a manufacturing plant that might have some issues that, that is the only plant that is going to manufacture a particular drug, and then it becomes suddenly in short supply. I think um, stay in touch with your doctors and um, know your treatment plans and talk to them early about all types of alternatives. Sir, uh, the patient is educated on what what needs to be done, what can be done, and how to uh, move with the shortage um, of, of their particular drug. Um, but definitely, in fact, have these discussions with your physician um, when, when you need to, especially chemotherapy drugs, as well as many other drugs as well. Um, and, and as a medical community, we will need to continue to be vigilant in getting this information um, as far in advance as possible when a drug might be in short supply so we can offer alternative therapies. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.